Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. Deepin DE is a very nice, very good looking desktop environment. But what can you change and tweak? Let's take a tour of the different settings. The settings panel. Deepin settings do not show up in a dedicated application, like GNOME, KDE or Elementor OS do. They are hosted in a separate panel that pops up from the right screen edge. This panel hosts system notifications, as well as all settings for the distribution and the desktop environment. This approach is nice and well integrated, and with the addition of blur and transparency, it really looks professional and clean. Once you open a category, you can scroll down to get to all of the other available settings, which avoids a hunt and click chase across many different panels. Account settings. These are pretty simple. You can create a new user account, or edit one that is already created. Once you start editing an existing account, you dive one level deeper in the settings and get the options to choose an avatar, modify the name and password, as well as enable auto-login at startup and enable logging in without a password, which I can't really recommend. You can also delete a user if you have sufficient authorizations and if there is more than one user account configured. Display settings. These are a bit more developed. If you're using a multi-monitor setup, you get to select how these screens behave with an option to display the same thing on all screens, extend your main screen with the other ones, or only use one of the displays. You also get an option to use display scaling from 1.0 to 2.0 with fractional scaling in between. Scaling works pretty well and is well implemented, but requires you to log out and log back in, which is annoying if you need to switch between modes frequently. Deepin also has an option to enable wireless displays, which I could not test since I don't own one of these. You also have access to the brightness setting per screen, which is awesome, and Night Shift can be turned on to switch off some of the blue light. Unfortunately, it doesn't allow you to tweak specific Night Shift settings, such as enabling it during a certain period of time. Deepin allows you to save multiple setting sets for the displays, letting you switch in one click the resolution, the brightness and the layout of your displays. This is a really nice touch. Default Applications This is a basic settings category, allowing you to pick your default browser, email client, text editor, music and video player, image viewer and terminal emulator. New apps that can fulfill one of these roles are automatically added to the right category, but you'll need to hunt for .desktop files if you want to add something else in here that is not detected automatically. Personalization Now we get to the good stuff. These settings allow you to tweak how deep in looks and feel. You first get to choose the amount of transparency you want. This setting is badly named, since at 0 everything is made fully transparent, and at 1 everything is opaque. The transparency setting only seems to affect the settings panel and the dock, not the transparency of the menus or the terminal. You can then change the theme between a set of limited options, the light or dark theme, which does not apply itself to deep in apps. If you enable dark theme, you'll still get light themes on default applications. You'll need to enable the dark mode on each individual app as well. This allows you to mix and match depending on the app you use. Other non deep in applications will respect the theme you selected. You can then choose between five different icon themes. Maria, which uses circle shapes for application icons and a flat theme for the rest of the icons. Papyrus, which is a well-known and loved icon theme. C, which adds a marine theme to everything and which I personally find fun but totally illegible. And the default deep in and deep in dark theme, which have very little variation between the two. Finally, you can change the cursor theme between Avita, the GNOME default, DMZ Black and White, which are used as default cursors for a lot of other distributions, and the Deepin theme, which I like quite a lot. Now, these default themes, as far as I know, cannot be changed. You can, however, add icon and cursor themes, just like you would on any other distro, by extracting them in the .icons folder of your user directory. They will then show up right in the settings afterwards. You also get some settings to tweak fonts, font size and font family for the standard and monospace fonts. The last setting is the window effects. Disabling this will remove all animations, transparency, window spreading functionality. While it does make Deepin look a lot more bland, it does reduce the resource consumption just a little bit. I'll still keep it on. The last personalization settings are found in the panel, allowing you to change between fashion and efficient mode, changing the panel location on any of the screen's edges, or tweaking the menu settings. 
If the deep in launcher is not to your taste, with its full screen grid of apps, you can reduce it to a standard menu by clicking on the little arrow in the upper right corner. This menu behaves a lot like the regular old Windows start menu and looks pretty good, even though I still prefer the default grid of applications. You can also sort apps in the grid view by categories instead of alphabetical order if you prefer, by clicking the menu in the upper left corner. Network settings. You'll get the standard fare of options here, activating or disabling wired Ethernet or Wi-Fi, and choosing a wireless network to connect to, as well as configuring a hotspot. You can create a new DSL connection, enter some VPN settings, or set up an application proxy, allowing you to make any app go through that proxy by right-clicking its icon in the launcher, as well as a system proxy, whose settings will be enforced globally. Finally, you get the network info for some handy information on your machine status in its network. Sound settings. You can enable or disable speakers and microphones, as well as changing each device's volume and balance. The Advanced tab allows you to switch between devices for audio input and output. On my machine, a lot of output interfaces were detected, when, hardware-wise, I only have the default audio output of the laptop and the microphone's audio jack. You can also disable sound effects, which I most definitely do, since Deepin has one of the most annoying sound themes I've ever heard. At boot up and shut down, it's not that big of a deal, but for notifications it's just too long and too loud. Time and date. Nothing very interesting here. You get to set the time zone, look at a giant analog clock, as well as enable auto time sync and set the date and time if Deepin guessed it wrong. You can, however, add some time zones to monitor other parts of the world, which is nice. Power management. Laptop and tablet owners will here be able to enable a power saving mode, as well as enabling this mode to auto turn on when the battery gets low. You can set the time before the screen turns off and before the whole computer goes to sleep, as well as if you need to enter a password to wake up the computer and the monitor. Finally, you can turn off hibernation when you close the lid on the laptop, which is handy if you use your laptop as a portable workstation or in docked mode. Mouse and touchpad. Nothing to write home about here. You can enable left-handed mode, which is always appreciated, disabling the touchpad when you type, and tweak the scroll speed and the double-click speed with a cute little stylized cat to try this setting on. Pointer speed can also be adjusted, but not the acceleration curve. You can simply enable or disable acceleration as a whole. You can also automatically disable the touchpad when you plug in a mouse, which is handy, and turn on natural scrolling, if you prefer using your trackpad as you would use a smartphone screen, pushing or dragging the content instead of moving the view. For touchpads, you get to set the speed, as well as enabling tap to click, or natural scrolling, which makes a lot more sense on a touchpad than on a mouse, and enabling palm rejection. Keyboard and language. Here you can change the delay before a pressed key will repeat its input, as well as the rate at which this input will be repeated. You can also auto-enable the numerical keyboard, which is great, as well as enabling a caps lock prompt, which will display a big capitalized letter when caps lock is enabled. This is a nice touch for those who tend to press this key accidentally. You can obviously change the keyboard layout, as well as adding more layouts, select the system language, and change a bunch of shortcuts, such as opening a Quake window terminal with Alt plus F2 by default, opening the deep in screenshot tool with Ctrl Alt plus A, accessing the multitasking view with Super plus S, or open the system monitor with Ctrl plus Alt and Escape. Update and system info. You can check for system updates available here, as well as display a notification if the repository's mirror has changed. You can automatically clear the package cache, which saves a bit of disk space, automatically download updates in the background, and changing the mirror, which you should definitely do since the official one is in China and that might be farther from another mirror, which could serve you packages a bit faster. You can test the speed of all mirrors if you're unsure, you can then select one of the options with a fast response. In the system info, you'll get a edition license button, which shows the GPL, and a boot menu option to tweak the default boot order, as well as enable the beautiful theme Deepin added to their boot manager. That's it for system settings. Deepin has the basics, and a few handy ones as well, and does not seem to lack any major option, in my opinion. Customization options are scarce, though, with no real theming support for Deepin apps and their hard-coded looks, and no tweaking of window button placement, for example. The behavior of the desktop environment, though, such as the default app launcher and the dock, is quite modifiable, which is a good thing. 
I think Deepin strikes the right balance of options and tweaking options so as not to be too frustrating or too complex. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing and turning on notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Linux EXP. Thank you guys for watching and goodbye.